to that person that wants to participate in the SA champs of the future is that if you can respect the, your nutrition, what you take in is what you take out. Your nutrition is very important uh, to help you achieve your greater goal. Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel where we talk cycling with almost elites. Thank you so much for all the love you've shown us for the previous episodes. We do read your comments. Thank you. Please don't forget to click the like as well as subscribe to, to the channel. Today we've got a, a legendary guest, uh, uh, George uh, Machini. You know, some call him Georgie. Georgie will ride in the morning, he'll ride in the afternoon. George will ride far, he will ride close, he'll ride often, he'll ride fast, he'll ride again, and he'll ride again. <laughs> Uh, 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 the man is always on the bike. George, thank you so much for coming through. We know this could have been time um, uh, or that spent on your bike, but you chose to be <laughs> here today. Uh, welcome to the channel. Tell us just a little bit about yourself. Tell us how long you've been riding and just tell us about your riding style, the type of rider you are, whether you are a climber or an endurance rider, uh, etc. Yeah, no. I, I have been, uh, first of all, I'm, 40, I'm turning 44 this year. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I like giving the guys a run for their money, <laughs> just for the heck of it. But uh, I, I am a technical person by, uh, by, by career. I'm actually in electrical engineering, telecommunications. Oh, interesting. Then the stress that it brings could be taken best on the bike, in my view. <laughs> and that is what nice. I, <laughs> that's what I, I do. Uh, they 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 always ask if anything is wrong at home. Everything is very fine at home. <laughs> uh, in fact, there's always a worry if I'm not writing. If I'm okay, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's that. Uh, I've got a uh, wife and two kids, so we're good. Yeah, uh, no no worries. And uh, yeah, that's uh, maybe a brief about me. Yes. And then, and then the type of rider you are, man, and I know you ride very... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, it took a while to figure it out, actually. I used to think that I am a, I am a sprinter uh, and domestic. And later, when I started riding with uh, a lot of people in, in, the, in the cycling world, and then most that had been there before me, I've been cycling only for five years now, and they started noticing things. I, I can now confirm that I'm a climber. Uh, of note, <laughs> I, I actually the sheer the sheer sight of a climb just makes me wanna go crazy, man. I, I saw fact, that in the look what I saw <laughs> this weekend. The way you smashed that last hill there, you know, I was there suffering, and you were having a good time in front. Uh, it makes yeah. sense. It makes sense. It's always <laughs> nice riding with you, Georgie. And I think a lot of people that have ridden with you will know you very well for your high cadence on the small chain ring and. Yeah. And we are very curious about that. Tell us a bit yeah. about that logic, that rationale of spinning the bike at such a high pace on a small chain ring. Why do you ride small chain ring? Actually, I didn't start out riding big ring uh, in my cycling years. So when I started out uh, 2015 ish, uh, or no, 2000, yeah, 2015, I was more a, uh, a heavy big ring guy, guy, rider, and I didn't know why I could not miss most of the time finish the distances. And I be the 100 or 60 at the time was a lot. If I do 100, I would always be happy. But I know I'd finish 100 with a very heavy saw, everything. And then uh, one day, uh, one of the avid riders, okay, and actually proposed that maybe I should uh, try and intertwine the small and the big as best as I can. So okay. then a couple of other... Yeah, and a couple of other people also came through asking maybe if I should experiment. So I started experimenting on, on riding small ring. And then I started realizing for my own sake, the small ring, and it's as fast as cadence, yes, but my heart rate actually goes as low as possible. And at many okay. times, as many times, for uh, like for example, in the Polo Guanito, uh, uh, the average, uh, you find my heart rate was sitting at around 40 to 50% of the uh, maximum heart rate. And the only time it will go up is if I'm going to the front. And even if I'm at the front, 
It also depends on what type of terrain it is. So therefore the cooler it stays or the longer, the longer it stays cool, the more my heart rate stays as low as possible because that spin keeps going for a while, for a longer time. So a wide small ring, in my view, it is more efficient way of riding really. It's a, I feel I am more efficient. I bend less of well, and then uh, my heart rate is lower. Therefore, because my heart rate is lower, my calories also go lower. And then also fatigue becomes, uh, I have a better way of handling fatigue uh, from, from that. So it means that I can sit longer on a bike without really feeling much pain onto it. The drawback That's of it, yeah. yeah. So the drawback of it though, is that you have to learn to breathe uh, basically. That's important because you are spinning so much, uh, 89, 90, sometimes 100, uh, and even beyond that. And you have to always know when you must breathe in and when you must breathe out. And during that time, there's probably pressure or no pressure. Pressure be it a climb or be it that you are pulling a people for a certain distance. So uh, it's a small ring because one wants to, to be more efficient and ride longer and sit longer on the bike and lower your heart rate so you can eat lesser but be much more fluidic uh, on the, as well on the bike as well. <laughs> but if I go big ring though, uh, in my view, or big chain, uh, then, then it's more about power. So you see big ring is power, is exertion, or sometimes in many riders, including my own uh, uh, fellow rider, uh, they, they've got a big ring and over time, the, the, the muscles get fatigued. Now to fight, fatigue of the muscles. It means you must have a lot more magnesium, a lot more potassium in your uh, things that you are drinking uh, as you are riding in order to counteract the effects of muscle fatigue because of uh, the muscles, the upper part of your thigh muscles are the ones that are continuously working when you are doing the big ring. But when you lower it and spin, then the bottom part of your thighs, in my view, are the ones that are doing the work and therefore you are breathing differently. And because you are breathing differently, you are introducing more oxygen into your body and therefore fatigue becomes less and less. That's basically the wow. idea. That, that, that's, that's quite interesting. Um, um, uh, that's very, very interesting. I mean, uh, Eugene, what do you want to ask the men? Go for it. Yeah, we've been waiting here, man, because uh, you, you, you touched a bit about it um, when you spoke about uh, magnesium and, and potassium. So, I mean, you know, let's find out from you what what's your... Um, nutritional strategy on the bike, off the bike. Uh, so, so what do you take um, in 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 between yeah. rides and all that stuff? So, let's hear from you, George. Yeah. So, so I always tell my guys or people I ride with more often to avoid it becoming a problem on a ride. You must behave on the bike as if you are off the bike. So, like yesterday uh, is always a rest day for most of our guys, and and even today I rode in the morning. And uh, beyond that, you must behave the same way. In other words, once a day, you have your, your bottle or squeeze bottle of your uh, uh, supplement of choice, whichever people are using. There's many of them out there. But you must have that uh, nutritional supplement uh, that you've got, uh, that you use when you are riding. Uh, and then because when you are introducing the nutritional supplement on the day of the ride, your body does not have... Uh, enough time to absorb the potassium or the magnesium or the salts or sugars that are there. So if you only have, let's say, for example, it's a ride of a four-hour ride, maybe 110 or 150 case uh, in this case. So you have 150, you have four hours, and your body uh, is only but getting used to the uh, or absorbing the magnesium that it needs. And therefore, by the time fatigue settles in, it has not even fully digested it. But body, funny enough, can take water in easily. It can consume that and use it for a better purpose, including pure salt or raw salt. But your supplements, when introduced on the race day or on the ride day, because Monday to Friday, maybe you were riding, but not really paying attention to your nutrition from a liquid point of view. On the day of the ride or race, there, it's not enough time for the body to give you the best. So uh, the, the plan behind it becomes between your Monday uh, to a Friday, you continue uh, having that one squeeze bottle per day, anytime in the course of the day to have that. Same thing if you are a person who likes eating peanuts uh, so when you are riding, make it normal that your body gets used to it, having peanuts in the body. Same thing goes with your banana. I've seen, for example, this past Saturday, one guy I noticed it was actually his first time eating a banana 
on that particular day at 200 at Bela Bela. Was it at Bela Bela? No, at uh, this place where there was a small onyana argument. But the, the, the essence of it is that you could see the banana doesn't want to go down. He's actually forcing himself the banana. So if, if he would have gotten used to a banana way before that time, as in like maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, one banana per day, eating your fruit is enough to allow your body to have enough in the, in the system as well. Same so thing you, goes to, As for you yeah. personally, what, what, what nutrition do you take on the bike? So... Oh yeah, that's it. I normally use uh, where, where maybe this is not a sponsored one, but I, no, I have go ahead, Yeah, I have Hydra Feet. It is also a nutrition of choice. I have also a Herbal Life. I have a, I use a CR7. It's my number one. And in, uh, CR7 is like um, a, from a nutrition, from a water point of replacing of, of salts. So we're replacing uh, potassium and, and magnesium and a bit of iron in there and some normal ordinary salt and small sugar, small amount. Similarly, your Hydra Fit gives you the same. So they are pound for pound the same thing and price pretty much the same. So that's what I use. And then also uh, prior to the race day, it's very important. So you need to have a protein a protein shake, a protein uh, drink of sorts. So I have the, I'm using the Herbal Life one. I know that my colleague or friend uses the, the name export whey protein. It's the same thing. It's important okay. though to have the, the whey or the protein uh, in a powder format from a Monday be prior to that Saturday so that your body, when you're eating your, your, your protein, you are fueling or you are giving food to your muscles. And then when you are drinking that uh, Nemet Sport, HydraFit and your Power Aid uh, and all these similar products during the course of the week, you are fueling the entire uh, endocrine system, your kidneys and your heart to function well because you, will, you can never have enough of iron and you can never have enough of your bodily salt, which you lose uh, on a day-to-day, -day, either through workout or through just walking around and so on. So you need to have always enough replenishment. Because if we say that a person must have meat Monday to Friday and different meats like a fish, like a red meat, like a chicken, um, some lose count of it. But it becomes easier as a cyclist, including myself, to say, I know one of the days in the week I must have a chicken. One of the days in the week I must have a something similar to me. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the nutrition that I take. And on the bike day, it's very important then to have uh, a sandwich, uh, which we have. We have a tuna, tuna mayo sandwich that we make, which allows us to really ride far. And then uh, we also have the uh, whole wheat bread. It's very important because you have then it's a carbohydrate of sort that you are introducing uh, in, in your system as well, which contains a lot more sunflower for the for the belly and, and so on, bloated. Oh, so I, those that, are, are the, yeah, sorry. I think I think that, that that's quite important, George. And you, you you're sharing uh, you know a lot of detail around the importance of that. And I think for a lot of us cyclists, we tend to focus a lot on training programs and the bike itself. And I think uh, nutrition is something that yeah. gets often neglected. And, and, and thanks a lot for, for sharing that. And it's something that we need to constantly keep at the back of our minds that you've got to complement your, 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 your training with good nutrition. But you know, in the interest of time, I want to talk about a very interesting topic that you and I started on Saturday. You spoke about the fact that, you know, uh, some cyclists purely uh, are faced with a, a psychological or mental challenge with regards to the weaknesses in cycling. For instance, I'm not the greatest climber. You know, I don't get excited seeing a long climb coming up. Uh, uh, tell us about, uh, you know, the psychology of climbing. Tell us, tell us about the psychology of how to, you know, perhaps have happy thoughts, you said, when, 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 when you're about to be faced with something you're not so great as. Tell us a bit more about getting around your weaknesses. Yeah, so uh, when, in long rides or short rides, mostly in long rides, uh, one of the things that happens is that out of your investment of a fitness of 100%, uh, which is there, granted, now you, you are faced with, uh, in this case, 280 kilometers to Pulugwan, uh, at 80% of that 280, then your fitness and your nutrition, all those things take a hike. They become a 20%. Then remains this 80%, which is your mind. So your mind 
has to now be much more bigger or stronger than, than anything else. Your fitness levels are there by default because you had been working your, your time between then yeah. and, and that particular moment. So to overcome this type of environment, you have to always have what we call, I call it happy thoughts. Yeah? Think about something that uh, in the recent past or in recent months makes you happy. Or if it's not something past, Think of what still awaits you, okay, beyond this hill, what's there, or people that you are next to, or engaging in conversations uh, as well that are much more uplifting and, con- uh, and helping you uh, uh, go over the, the mile itself. But it's a mind thing. The, it's a, the, the hill, or some of the guys I know are tormented by even the flats themselves to say, why is this so long? Why can't we just uh, take a small break of sort in this case? But, to, to overcome the mental strength, you are who you ride with. So the people that are around you, during the 80% where now, where during the, the part where you've passed the 80% mark of the route itself, you now have this uh, challenge to trust and work with the uh, people that you are with on that peloton and then they your teammates to be able to help you or carry you uh, strongly by in, in terms of positivity as well. So that's that's very key as well. To, you conquer it by, by focusing all your mental strength on wanting to see yourself uh, finish this. Why did I start this? Uh, for, to whom is it important? It's, you do it for yourself and, and, and that's all that matters. And what would it mean to you if you reach to Pulogwani with your bike, if it's your first time? If it's your second time, uh, what, what, I wonder what time I finished last year versus what time I'll finish now in this case. And then you're always playing all these scenarios in your head, but at the positive ones uh, to help you uh, and, and your fellow mates uh, to, to, to go through. One of the things that I, I saw also works best, uh, I do that with my the fellow riders, that when we get to 80% of the route, which I always know which is, what is the particular distance, I then introduce headphones or headsets that, that I now ask them to listen to some music, whatever music is playing. It's a distraction to the legs, it's a distraction to the mind, and then it allows them to, to not focus so much on road fatigue because that's what happens. The mind leaves you when uh, the road fatigue kicks in. And when road fatigue kicks in, the team captain or fellow teammates uh, either going to play on a loudspeaker, one of these bike carrier thing music, or you will have your own specific music that you like to play with and, and, and be able to do that. Another thing that is very uh, uh, dangerous uh, for most cyclists, I, I have noticed, even in Saturday, I saw the same thing in my, my friend, is that uh, when you get to a water point or stop point or a lunch point, leave water leave phoning someone, <laughs> leave you because you know what is happening. Sometimes, yes, the phone is a good thing and, and many times, and other times it's a bad thing because now you see a WhatsApp, you see bad news. Someone passed away or, or, or milk is finished at home or something. Something that's just gonna, <laughs> something that's just gonna take you off because you had a certain mental focus, right? And then the yeah. fact that the wife or girlfriend or daughter told you something, that is disturbing your mind for that moment. And that in itself is enough to just take you uh, over the edge. And yes, it could be a good thing you get a call maybe from someone loved one or at home or something and that telling you, call, get on and do this. And then maybe that's a good thing. But in my view, and I've told my guys, guys, let's switch off data and just have a phone phone just for emergency. And many of the guys actually go flight mode and they go until the end and then they switch on their phones and do all this. But only time that thing that's playing is music and positive music uh, whatever music you like just listen to that and then the teammates around you uh, enjoy taking photos because it helps uh, take away the fatigue you know that is key if you have a support car and it's a safer environment like we had over the weekend as well then the yeah. support car driver comes around next to you guys and say something nice and uh, or something you know or sometimes ask you uh, do you see something all these positive distractions are enough to help yeah. you. So me, yeah. in, in one of the things that help push forward is also touristic element. You know, we're passing next to Euphoria. You tell the guy, you know, Euphoria is one of the largest uh, lodges in South Africa. And that in itself, a person goes, oh, yeah, is it? And you, you're forgetting that we are doing 35, 80, actually uh, 35 to 40 k's an hour, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And, and I noticed this about you, George, is that you always have, you're always full of energy and people <laughs> know you. you. You can pick up when George is arrived or when George is around. And I think that's also part of what you're talking about, you know, create yeah. that positive energy even before you, 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 yeah. you, you start writing. Yeah, um, so, so that's true. And I mean, you know, over the weekend, I've probably had my, my longest ride, which was mm-hmm. 277 um, kilometers and you know having George there you know it didn't feel like 277 kilometers <laughs> and, and 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 you know just to touch on the fact that you know the mind plays a very big role especially when you're riding riding far which we'll talk about in a second um, is you know I've, I had little to no sleep um, the night before um, you know riding that 277 kilometers and I found myself you know, being surrounded by my teammates and the people that I ride with, and they were the ones pushing me all the way to the end because there were moments where I literally needed to get off the bike and just, you know, nap for a few minutes. But, you know, I, 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 I didn't do that because of the people that are around me. Um, and then I think, that, you know, the second point or so question I want to ask is let's talk about the I Ride Far um, campaign mm-hmm. or... or, or or writing style, you know, where, where did that start and 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 then why do you do it? The the right far was a concept or an idea that came about last year, actually 20, uh, 2020 December, when, when we were chasing mileage for the the Rafa 500, Festive 500 in December 24th, 31 March, 31 December. And then after that, then in January of that, uh, of 2021, uh, our, our current captain of Vusi then asked, uh, I wonder if, since you are enjoying riding this far, uh, I would like to see uh, how long it will take us to go to, uh, we were at that time planning to go to Bloemfontein. And then we plotted it out and then we went to Bloom and back. And then he says, maybe we must just make this a, a normalize uh, going distances, uh, riding far since you the with the the what is this races were at the time still suspended and and then we we started then on the schedule of of riding uh, longer distances uh, just on a day in and out or even multi days and that became sort of addictive now and suddenly then uh, a couple of other guys started now liking the aspect of getting to a place uh, by bike and i would probably say eugene where are you from and you say yeah I am from Nkangal and I'm thinking, hey, why don't we just ride to Nkangal next week, Saturday? And you're like, yeah, I've never been home with my bike. And I say, yeah, let's go and see your mother with your bike, you know, and we ride there. And then it happens to be far. We get there, we eat, so we sleep, we come back. And, and that's how the concept came about. And then also it seems to, at the time it didn't appear so, but it appears to appeal more to the, the tourism, bike tourism aspect of it, that you can just unwind and be free uh, on the bike and, and you get over a, a sort of a barrier that you used to have when you are having a road race, which is more intense. You can't even explore or even see that, oh, we're passing next to a place called Mokopane, for example, and what's so nice about Mokopane type of thing. So you have time to unwind. Yes, there's pace and all this, but it's much more different. The ambience and the people you are surrounded with allows the environment itself to be much more conducive. Uh, so riding far then became sort of an addictive thing. And over time, then the, the, the phenomena of Bekele Beke came through. And then we thought, ah, let's adopt it and ride far, hashtag Bekele Beke, you know, kai kapa kai, nin kapa nin, man kapa man. So then suddenly it becomes a, a, a normal thing, basically, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. And, yeah. and also, just as the last point is that then we started, we put down with uh, Uponso as well, and Vusi and Ntanga that, oh, where do you want to ride? And we call it the bucket list. And then we were still calling it the Bianchi bucket list because I ride a Bianchi, you know? <laughs> so it's a Bianchi bucket list because that is the way would your Bianchi take you today or this weekend or this month? And then it became, oh, I want to go to Cape Town. I want to go to Guyane. I want to go to East London. And, and there's so many places. I want to go to Uppington, for example, and Katu and, and, and Mahikeng as well as one of the things. So then it became a bucket list of where I want to ride uh, at a certain time uh, on my bike, whether partnered with Soshanguve uh, or partnered with uh, A. Vukani or partnered with uh, uh, Kanagi Kurlen, it doesn't matter who, uh, as long as there's a distance and mileage, oh, why not? Yeah, go there yeah. and enjoy this. No, no, very, very interesting, uh, Georgie. You know, um, it's a pity we are tight for time. You are such a, 
a library where cycling is concerned. You've got such a wealth of information. Um, just in closing, Georgie, in the, just for, for the last minute, what would you like to say to cyclists out there, you know, at all various levels, from the guy who started last week to the person who's trying to win Gauteng Champs or something like that? To that person that is, uh, uh, maybe I start with your latter, which is the, to that person that wants to participate in the SA Champs of the future, is that if you can respect the, your nutrition, what you take in is what you take out. Your nutrition is very important. Uh, to help you achieve your greater goals, followed by obviously your physical uh, activity of riding as well. And then number three, for that SA champs uh, or or racing type of person, respect sleep. Uh, It's very, very important that you must have at least at a minimum uh, seven to eight hours of sleep, at a minimum. You know, in a ride like... Sorry, George, for that, is that before the race or just generally? Yeah, generally, but very important before the race. Very important. You see, to, uh, when you are riding, for, for, for Pulukwani as an example, and it's very classical and direct, is that for Pulukwani, the ride started at 4. We started at 2 a.m., so which means that I should be in bed by 6 uh, uh, Friday night so that I can be awake, I can get that 8 to 9 hours of sleep. Because when you have lesser sleep on your bike, whether be it you are racing or be it that you are uh, riding far, you're going to suffer from psychological issues. Fatigue is one of them. The number one thing that shows my guys didn't sleep well is fatigue, the cramp. So now they have muscle or he says the pelvic is wrong. So you must uh, allow your body to rest. Rest is part of an exercise of its own because it allows your heart to go lower. It also allows your muscles to reform. And so if you don't sleep enough because you're standing doing this and some people drink, they do all... When you're going to race, you're not going to give your, your body the fighting chance it deserves. You're not going to give the race the, the chance that it deserves. But if you rest by sleeping, uh, then it allows uh, your reformation and your body to recover well. And also, if you rest in a sense of, of the bike for a moment, for a day, to allow also the similar to happen, but on a day basis. So that will help a lot. To the person who's beginning cycling, uh, the, your body is a, an experimental lab really at this point in your life you've just started cycling and you are happy with doing 200 kilometers a man that's fine uh, no matter how long or short you are riding just remember the main purpose why you love cycle to, to cycle far or to cycle short keep focusing on doing exactly that because uh, you must not give yourself unnecessary pressure by comparing yourself with someone who's been doing it for a while and saying, I want to be there. And therefore you want to jump all the hoops in order to fast track your, your fitness levels. It takes time and it's a journey. It is a journey on its own cycling. And by the time you get there, you will then reap the rewards of your patience and persistence and perspiration. No, oh, thank you so much, George. Um, as Ino said, you're literally an encyclopedia when it comes <laughs> to cycling, and I hope we can we can have you on the show again in in future to discuss um, in in much greater detail um, another topic. Um, thanks again for your time, and I mean, you know, if people want to follow you in Strava, what's what's your handle on Strava? Um, on, so they on can, Strava, so they can see the crazy rise that you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on Strava, I still go by the same name, George T. Machinini. And then on Instagram, it's at best machining. And then same thing at uh, Twitter, it's also the same at uh, at best machining. And Facebook as well, same thing. Uh, the club name is mostly where I would appear a lot. Uh, so, but yeah, you're welcome. And don't forget to give kudos. I mean, they must not just view on Strava. They must give kudos and comment. I love comments. Uh, they, nice. They're quite good. And any advice really are there, we, we always will share with no cost to anyone, please. Of course. Uh, th- thanks again, George. Um, and uh, we'll have you again, definitely in the future. And to everyone else, uh, thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.